Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so today I'm going to talk about uh, this question. It's a great question by Commander Rem. Alright, real quickly before I get to that, I just want to say again there is no biblical relevance to 70 AD, no significance to that date in the Bible whatsoever but I do appreciate these comments and there's a lot of good ones okay uh, again I, I thought I made it clear in this video that Daniel 9 verse 27 is the fulfillment of Jesus Christ when he laid down his life for the sins of the world okay so when he laid down his life he made an end of sins and he caused the sacrifice and oblations to cease okay he destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days alright so the destruction of the temple was not 70 AD it was Jesus laying down his life alright in John chapter 2 I thought I was clear about this in the video already and it's it should be clear in the scripture all right the destruction of the temple was the body of Jesus when he laid down his life okay all right so I already spent a lot of time on that all right and uh, that's what you know the, that's why I keep saying man there there's so many false teachers out there that we got to start proving all things all right if you put the truth before your even your own self and trust the Word of God trust the Bible that you hold in your hands it ought to be clear that Jesus fulfilled Daniel 9 when he laid down his life as the perfect offering for the sins of the whole world alright so let's get to this question I'm gonna try to make my video shorter Let's see if that's possible. Alright, so Commander Rem says, Does the time Jesus came back after he was crucified to the two women at his grave, showing his wounds, proving he had returned, count as the second coming, and why, if no? Alright, so, um, first of all, when Jesus resurrected from the grave, all right, this was not proving he had returned but proving that he had resurrected from the dead and rebuilt the temple in three days just like he said he would alright so let me see how to how can I go about this I guess let's do it this way now I want to encourage you to um, to uh, strengthen your confidence in your knowledge of the Bible all right and so what I would encourage you to do is to read Matthew 28 Mark 16 Luke 24 and John 20 it'll take you about five minutes a chapter all right so about a total of 20 minutes now I know you'll spend 45 minutes even two hours watching Netflix Netflix uh, movies or Netflix series you know if you can if you, you might even spend two hours scrolling uh, TikTok videos watching 30 second videos one after another I know this is what people do okay but you can't spend five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes reading the Bible there's something wrong okay so I want to encourage you and this is amazing stuff this is more amazing than TikTok videos alright so in Matthew 28 you've got uh, you know Jesus he died and, uh, and Mary Magdalene and Mary and the others they go to the grave and they see that the Lord is not there. Alright, so first of all, um, 
let me just point out that it was not just two ladies all right it was multiple ladies okay so in Luke 24 it says Mary Magdalene Joanna Mary the mother of James and other women all right so all these accounts are correct it's just you get different details in each account because you're essentially what it is is four people are giving their account of what they witnessed all right so specifically let's use John 20 all right and so again uh, the women they go to the sepulcher and they see that the Lord is not there and the two uh, or two angels there and they uh, they ask Mary well, why weepest thou and she said unto them because they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him and when she had thus said she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus and Jesus said unto her why why weepest thou whom seekest thou she supposed him to be the gardener saith unto him sir if thou have borne him hence tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away Jesus saith unto her Mary she turned herself and saith unto him Rabboni which is to say master Jesus saith unto her touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God all right so this is a remarkable incredible event where Jesus is witnessing to them that he has resurrected from the dead just like he said he would and now real quickly let's go to Matthew 27 uh, if it's possible there we go and we see that it wasn't just Jesus but there were many that came out of their graves and witnessed appeared to many all right so this was just an event to show that Jesus had resurrected from the dead these people that came out of their graves and witnessed to other people these people did not ascend to heaven all right, that's important to understand all right so the only one that ascended to heaven is Jesus all right so understand this in 1st Corinthians 15 but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming now I want you to remember this at his coming this is the return of our Lord Jesus all right so real quickly as quickly as possible I guess in John 14 in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again remember that come again I will come again and Christ at his coming all right so when he comes in the clouds of heaven that is his return all right in Revelation chapter 1 behold he cometh with clouds all right and every eye that shall see him okay so there's going to be no doubt about it when he comes in the clouds of heaven there's going to be no doubt about it when he returns all right just like what we read in John 14 I go to prepare a place for you and I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also all right so afterward they that are his or they that are Christ at his coming all right, so this is the end of the world. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. He must reign till he put all his enemies under his feet. All right, that goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, so at the end of the world is when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall be transformed into our glorified body we will put on incorruption we will put on immortality and then when this happens 
Then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Okay, it's very simple. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. And they are destroyed forever. All wickedness, all evil, all sin, everything. Death, the world, everything is destroyed at that moment. Death is swallowed up in victory. So the idea of a seven year tribulation after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's not in the Bible. That's in a Hollywood movie. All right, you gotta, you gotta be able to tell the difference. All right, and then there's no thousand year period afterward. All right, because death is swallowed up in victory. There's no, no, there would be no point in it. All right. Okay, so this is very simple stuff. In Matthew 24, we read about Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. Mark 13, Luke 21 says the same thing. All we have to do is connect the dots. All right, there, I could go on and on about this particular subject. I think it's a great subject. It's something that needs to be talked about. And it's very easy to understand, very simple. And it's very consistent all throughout the Bible. All we have to do is connect the dots. All right. But, uh, you know, there's so much I want to talk about. But it's really the same thing I talk about every day. You know, don't let these deceivers fool you. All right. Because in the end of the world, the deception is going to be greater than ever before all right when jesus is asked of the end of the world the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying i jesus am christ and shall deceive many many false prophets shall arise and deceive many false christ which is antichrist okay false christ shall arise false prophets shall show signs and great wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect don't let yourself be deceived all right evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived all right so things are getting worse and worse and worse and that's what we're reading in matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 about how Things are getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, and it's so much so that except God had not shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sakes, those days shall be shortened. All right, and um, so where am I at here? Okay. Oh no. Did I pick the wrong one? Here, hold on a second. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Okay, so in Mark 13, for example. Oh, goodness. Goodness sakes. Alright, so we'll go here, go there. And except the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened those days. So, we know that in the days of Noah that there was only eight souls saved right we know that uh, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about there was not even ten righteous okay and so also we know that we live in a in a time great deception the great deception or the great tribulation is the great deception of the world for then shall there be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be this is not about what we're seeing on TV with violence and you know insanity day in and day out the, dis the great tribulation that we're up against is the deception and all the deceivers around us coming at us from every possible angle. 
All right, and it's it's krill. It's crystal clear. Uh, all throughout Scripture, we're seeing that things are getting worse and worse, deceiving, and evil seducers deceiving and being deceived. Okay, so the deception is is greater than it's ever been at any time in the history of this world. All right, so. Uh, that's why you know you hear me say that uh, um, prove all things and hold fast that which is true the key to understanding the Bible is faith it's always been about faith believe the Bible that you hold in your hands all right and we see evidence of this people that do not believe the Bible they hold in their hands they promote these fi these uh, false teachings these teachings uh, like Daniel 9 for example where they say this is um, you know the Antichrist is going to make an end of sins essentially saying that Jesus is the Antichrist okay we see all sorts of deception and it almost seems like every single verse is being attacked in the Bible all right so I appreciate this uh, question commander Rem it's a great question but uh, some clarity is needed and I hope I've made it very simple to understand and again I want to encourage you to read Matthew 28 Mark 16 Luke 24 and John 20 to build your confidence in the scripture okay and it, it all begins with faith you gotta believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God because it is all right, and then you know, just read, and uh, and by reading, you you'll build your confidence in the Word of God. All right, and then you'll see, oh yeah, that's right. So when Jesus appeared to the women, he wasn't proving that he had returned; rather, he was proving that he had resurrected. All right, and he has promised to come back for us. And that promise is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, that is when we are lifted up in the air. That is when we are transformed into our glorified bodies. And that is when our enemy is gathered at our feet. And that is when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. That is when the wheat are gathered into his barn and the terrors are gathered in bundles and burned okay that is the end of the world that is the judgment of God that is the great day of the Lord alright that is when everything becomes new